90.3 FM, you're listening to Helping Seniors of Brevard on this Wednesday. Joe Steckler is off today, but filling in for Joe, here is Carrie Fink. And Carrie, that's kind of uh, music of your life, isn't it? <laughs> it is. We were just talking as you were playing String of Pearls, Glenn Miller Orchestra. So <laughs> great, great, great theme song. Because it's up, it's happy, it's a beautiful spring day here along the uh, Space Coast. Everybody is getting their vaccinations. We're hoping to get through the rest of all the COVID-19. We've made it this far. Let's just uh, be patient and uh, go through the whole process. But I'm excited because we have so many things to talk about in today's radio show. I'm going to ask everybody to grab a uh, uh, paper and a, and a pencil because you're gonna, we're going to be talking about a lot of different things that you're going to want to take notes on. I first want to acknowledge uh, our founder and president, Joe Steckler. You know, Joe is just, uh, you can't keep a good guy down. He is, uh, he's in his physical therapy now, John, uh, telling me that he's getting ready to, uh, he's working on the process of getting his second knee operation. So Joe well, is just not going to give up. <laughs> uh, that's great to hear. It's uh, something to really admire. And uh, Joe... Uh, uh, does it uh, as a leader, and uh, that's what uh, leadership is all about, lead by example, and he certainly does. Absolutely, and we were talking actually a little bit about he's back He's back working on his articles. You know, uh, he had to take a little bit of hiatus on some of that being in the, um, you know, when he was uh, 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 in the rehab on his first new knee operation. So now he's working on his articles for the um, – uh, hometown news you find him in aldea today ebony news today uh all the different publications senior scene magazine all the different publications around our area but today we have a packed studio so i'm so excited to welcome back our executive director rick broderick who's in the house hey rick how are you i'm doing great Kerry. it's great to be here and um you're right uh, it's just wonderful john uh, when we talk about how joe is trying to take care of himself and push himself uh, I think, excuse me, I think we're going to have some really good stories from him in terms of how he has made it through this and how he's going to tell others, this is what you need to do to get your body back in shape. And it's not easy, but you got to stay at it. I, um, I really admire what uh, <clears throat> the type of attitude that uh, Joe Steckler has. And uh, he hangs in there and makes it happen. And uh, that's why I think uh, he and the organization is uh, so successful because he he does uh, make sure that he gets out in front and uh, and uh, carries the flag and uh, full speed ahead. Yeah, no, it's good. And so speaking of somebody who you went through a whole knee thing and you've done. So let me introduce our house first. So we have a great longtime friend of helping seniors. She is, uh, at least in one guy's opinion, the top expert on reverse mortgages in our area. Uh, she's been doing this for a long time. We were joking before the radio show. You know, Joe has always been tough on folks because he doesn't want somebody involved with helping seniors who is not 100% devoted to the cause <clears throat> and treating our seniors both correctly and, and, and making sure that we're looking out for their needs. And uh, Barb McIntyre, who is our, uh, with reverse mortgage funding, is the uh, real expert on this. But I remember you really had to kind of walk Joe through the paces to make sure he was, like, getting comfortable with the whole idea. Oh, I did. It took more than one visit to keep educating him and, and winning him over. But after him referring people to me that had questions and then them coming back to him to say how much better they understood the product and how grateful they were and how I was such a good teacher... He, I won him over, and uh, he's a great guy, and he's definitely, uh, you know, his stamina with this knee replacement stuff. I, my left knee I had replaced a year ago in January, and it is not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. Yeah, and after he goes through the whole second, whole, whole first one and has to do, like, extent, they were making him walk, like, three hours a day or something. And so then he's saying, like, well, I'm, I'm in training now for the second knee. So right. that's the right attitude. Absolutely. Right? It can't be easy, but it's the right attitude. And so, anyway, as we're going to talk a little bit more about what's happening in the reverse mortgage industry, obviously there's a housing boom. Everything is going, looks like, in the right direction with all that. So we're going right. to get some insight on that as, as we go along. But one of the things I wanted to 
to just kind of quickly ask you about right right here at the outset is you know we've been talking about that you've been associated with helping seniors for for many many years and you've seen the kind of work that over the years we've done and i was laughing because while we're technically a local organization when you donate to helping seniors you are literally helping seniors in Brevard because all the programs and the things we do, the, se the county's senior information helpline, we have an exciting new program that we're going to be, uh, we're sort of in development with, but I'm going to ask Rick to talk a little bit about how we're actually doing some outbound effort now to get folks involved. But you've really watched this over the years uh, and seen that it's really a local hands-on operation, but yeah, you'll get, people will see the videos and they'll call you from California, Illinois, all over. That's right, because those videos, they're YouTube, and so if you're researching something and you go to YouTube, it, I might just pop up there in a conversation with Joe. I had someone call me on the phone one Saturday afternoon and said, I'm looking at you right now. <laughs> I started <laughs> looking over my shoulder, and I'm like, where? <laughs> And he said, I'm looking at you on YouTube. And it was, a, it was a recording Joe and I had done talking about, you know, just about the product. So, yes, the outreach is amazing. So it's not just helping people in this county. It's ultimately with all, the, all of the media. And, Carrie, you're huge for bringing all that to helping seniors. The, your ability to bring the radio and all of the, you know, uh, YouTube and videos, and that's been so instrumental. So, yeah, well, well, get the word out there. It's so important. We always say we live in a county that's 72 miles north to south, and I think, Rick, we were talking that it's only like 14 miles wide or something. Right. It's, it's, not a, it's not a huge county width-wise, but when you're, we always say we got to talk to seniors who are every place from Mico to Mims. But going back to this, you know, we were joking last week on the air that it was Dr. Lee Sheldon who got Joe into radio because of that. I mean, sorry, into TV, mm -hmm. because in those days, uh, Dr. Sheldon had his own TV show and he invited Joe. I guess when Joe was getting the whole Brevard Alzheimer's and the Joe's Clubs and all that going. And then the story goes that it was none other than John Harper who got Joe started on the radio side, too, all those years ago. Mm hmm. It, uh, it was, and that goes back to, as you said uh, correctly uh, on that, uh, Carrie, uh, Joe had been a guest on uh, Lee Sheldon's program a couple of times, and uh, that uh, gave me the opportunity to get with Joe and to talk to him about doing radio as well. And uh, Joe is the longest-running talk show host in Brevard County. Other than you. Other than myself. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm first on that list, and Joe is number two. And um, I think the next closest person is perhaps 10 years after us. Wow. So wow. Um, uh, that, uh, that goes back pretty far. No, it's great. So, you know, this really is a Brevard County operation. Everything that we do, uh, the funding that comes in, it, it's, it's really all supported locally. Uh, the things that we try to do are geared for helping seniors who are here locally. So I've heard a lot of people go, you know, there's a lot of charitable organizations that could help a lot of them, but I really want to help something that's helping close to home. Mm -hmm. And so that's what Helping Seniors is about. And it's one of the reasons that as we start to talk about one of this new initiative, it's kind of our wish list. We're a small organization, and we can only go as fast as people are willing to help us. But one of the things that Rick brought to the table, which I think is so important and critical, he said, Carrie, we've got to find a way. He said, you know, you'll go past a house, and there'll be like tall weeds and everything. And you know, there's a story going on. Nobody's seen the person who lives in the house. Maybe they're a recent widow or, or widow, uh, you know, and, and something's going on. And so this problem with isolation <clears throat> is very serious. And let's be honest, for all of us, it's been complicated during COVID. So at, at the very least, we've all gotten a taste of it. And so even years ago, when we did a study here in Brevard County, uh, of the top 10 needs of seniors and the things that you would expect certainly are up there, medical care and transportation and housing. But interestingly enough, making the top 10 was I need more social activities and more, more I feel isolated and I want to meet more people in my community. And so that's one of the reasons why a little bit over a year ago, we picked an interesting time to start this, Chris Morse, <laughs> was we started the Helping Seniors Travel Club <laughs> because the idea was to try to create some avenues for socialization. And so 
Chris, now that we are on the tail end of the COVID, meaning that everybody's getting their vaccinations and that everybody seems to have a better handle on how to do it, travel uh, industry looks like it's opening up. Uh, we have tried, uh, we have set, actually, I think this is our fourth date reset, but I think this one's going to go, right, Chris? Boy, after four, after three scheduled dates due to the CVC or the CDC COVID uh, instructions for cruise ships, our cruise on October 17th looks like it's going to go. Yeah, that's exciting. They're, they're talking about they're going to be sailing in July, and so they'll have several trips under their belt. And as you've talked about, it's going to be the safest place in the world to be because they're not going to take any chances. Yeah, the cruise lines and the hotels that support the cruise line industry are going to be safer to be there and on than in your own room or in your own house because of all the rules and regulations that they have to follow. And, of course, all of the people will, will do their best to make sure that they're going to be safe, too, on the cruises. And the cruises are only going to go out about two-thirds full, so there'll be plenty of room to have fun. And our cruise on the 17th of October is going to be full of exciting things. Uh, we're going to have a guest entertainer. Yes. We're going to have a cocktail party. We're going to have special uh, amenities along the way. And we're going to go to one of the number one rated cruise line um, islands mm -hmm. in the Caribbean. Yeah, the, uh, the MSC Ocean K. Uh, my wife, Tammy, was just, she, I guess she got one of those promotional videos that they stick out on Facebook about Ocean K. And she comes wandering in. She goes, this island looks really cool. We've never been to it. But the ship actually spends two days and one night there, right? They pull in, they pull in, in the morning. It's a beautiful Caribbean island, uh, preserved very well. Uh, and then they spend the whole day there so you can relax on the beach, enjoy your own private island. And then it spends the entire night there. And they were she was showing me, she said, they've got light shows. They've got all kinds of things that go on all night there. And then you get to spend the next day snorkeling, enjoying the beach, soaking up the sun, whatever you want to do. So it's two beautiful days at the Ocean K Marine Preserve on this cruise. And then you get to go onward to uh, beautiful Mexico. You get to stop in uh, Cozumel and Costa Maya, so it's an incredible journey. And uh, as you know, MSC is reaching out just to support the Helping Seniors of Bavard Foundation, and they're going to give us a special that I think a lot of the seniors know about, that if you book an inside cabin for Helping Seniors of Bavard Foundation cruise, they're going to automatically upgrade you to a balcony cabin at no extra charge, and they're, all gonna do they're also going to donate back part of their profits back to the Helping Seniors of Bavard Foundation to support all the needy seniors in the Bavard County area. So besides being a wonderful cruise, besides coming and, and visiting with seniors of your age in the Bavard County area, which, which tackles that isolation pro problem, we're also going to make a little bit of uh, funds to help support this, the needy seniors in the Bavard County area. Yeah, it is really a win-win-win. And after we've all been isolated over this amount of time, uh, what a great opportunity to get out. And one of the things I want to to remind you about as you're listening to us talking about this cruise is some people might say, well, my travel days are over. I can't get around the way I used to. I might have an uh, oxygen machine. I have different things I have to be concerned with. And one of the things that you need to know is that Chris and his partner, Betty, are special needs certified travel agents, which means you guys have a lot of experience in helping people travel that didn't think they could travel. You'd be surprised. I bet out of 10 phone calls, one or two of those phone calls are seniors that says, I can't travel anymore. I don't feel comfortable about traveling. And after talking with them and, and, and finding out what their needs are and what their fears are, uh, half of those folks actually go on a trip with us. So there is a way to get seniors that don't feel real comfortable or don't think they can travel anymore. There is a way for you to go on this cruise and to travel, travel the world if you want. Yeah, and, and in particular, though, this is a great place to start because it does so many things. First of all, everything will be sort of back in swing by uh, October 17th. Uh, they'll have already done some cruises, good success under that. But one of the reasons we picked this cruise, uh, Chris, if I have it all correct, is because, number one, it's sailing right here out of our home, home port of Port Canaveral. So you don't have to get on an airplane or try to mess with all that or bus to get down to South Florida or, or over to Tampa. You can just literally roll right up the road to, Cape, you know, to the port, Port Canaveral, and uh, jump, jump on the ship right there. 
It's going to be really easy to get to. Uh, as you know, the, the Port Canaveral has expanded. Probably in 2022, you're going to see six or seven major cruise lines come into Port Canaveral. Port Canaveral is supposed to actually take over being the largest port in Florida over, wow. over Miami. Wow. So we're excited about that. And um, it's just going to be a wonderful place to help the seniors uh, and their families. Or uh, Our next cruise, I think, that we're going to plan is for the seniors to take their grandkids on a cruise. Love it. So that's going to be a great cruise, too. So uh, all in all, helping seniors at Bavard Foundation and all of the travel vendors that we've been in touch with, are just ready to support the Helping Seniors of Bavard Foundation and help Joe just kick this thing off. So if a senior calls the senior hotline, there's somebody there. Kim will be there to take care of them and actually help them with, uh, with, with whatever their needs are. Absolutely. Hey, Chris, uh, just wondering, where are the, uh, the cruise ships uh, anchoring their ships? They're not in Port Canaveral. Where are they? Oh, there's a map that you can get to if you uh, Google it, but all of the ships... Are, are based all around the Caribbean islands. They've cut their staff in half, okay, so the staff went home. The other staff has taken care of the ships, and they're based around m m many of the, like Jamaica, Barbados, St. Croix, Cozumel. They're all around that area, just ready to open up as soon as the CDC gives us the, the, the okay. So they're not in port there either. They're anchored off. They're anchored uh, off the off port the, yeah. because they can't afford to stay in port because there's port charges. That's what I thought. But yeah. the good news is uh, the cruise lines have started. Have, they're, they're very smart. Listen to this. This is really cool. In order to get the cruising going, uh, Crystal cruise lines, a very, very popular mm -hmm. cruise line, is now doing cruises out of Nassau, Bahamas. And they're starting on 3rd of July. And you say, well, why Nassau? The CDC has no control over the Bahamas. So Crystal can go in there and take all of the U.S. passengers, if they fly into Nassau, and take them on a great cruise. Royal Caribbean said, hey, that's not a bad idea. So they're now porting a ship in Barbados. Oh, wow. So you can take a Royal Caribbean ship out of Barbados without having any CDC sanctions and start cruising the Caribbean on Royal Caribbean. I think a lot of the other cruise ships are going to start to do that. But hopefully the CDC will open up where we'll be able to start cruising in July and August and have a really good time where all the – all the ports will open up here in the United States. But th those are just some of the uh, fun things that are going on. Royal Caribbean had one ship uh, in port this past uh, weekend at uh, Port Canaveral. Oh, wow. uh, was that for maintenance, I would right. imagine? Right, coming yeah. in for maintenance, yes. Yeah. So. Chris, one of the questions I had, too, is you talked about um, you know, some of the things and even the fact that they're going to be opening up in July. And when I went up there this weekend to take a look, um, I did hear that July, August, at least the, the first ones that are going to go out of Canaveral are expecting to have virtually 100 percent of the people will have to have had their vaccinations. Is that, a, is that the case? And how far is the CDC saying that that's going to be required? The CDC is, is giving the cruise lines the option to do that. Now, Crystal Cruise Lines out of Nassau requires vaccinations. Royal Caribbean out of Barbados is not requiring vaccinations. So it's, it's up to the cruise lines. And I, and I think that since Florida is, is, I shouldn't say basically a senior state, but there's a lot of seniors here in Florida, that I don't think the cruise lines are going to ask for vaccination or a vaccination passport to get on the ships in, in uh, Florida. However, there's six or seven cruise lines that go out of Florida, so there might be one or two that might say, well, we're going to do this or we're going to do that. But uh, currently, only Crystal Cruise Lines is requiring vaccinations here in the U.S. And I think American Cruise Lines that cruise the Mississippi rivers are asking for vaccination uh, passports or vaccination cards. So those are the only two that I know of right now. Tell, t just uh, talk to me about that uh, Mississippi cruise. Is that a good cruise? I mean, it, it seems like it's just picked up so much lately. Uh, well, not lately, you know, prior to COVID that, you know, there was more ships going down and up the Mississippi. So tell me a little bit about that. If you that. want an opinion of a 35-year uh, cruise veteran and have been on over 120 cruises all over the world, there's two cruises that seniors should go on. First cruise, got to go to Alaska. Got to do the Alaskan cruise uh -huh. from Vancouver 
to Whittier, actually Whittier to Vancouver. You always want to go southbound. And the second cruise that seniors want to go on and will love to death is cruising the Mississippi River. Yes. From either St. Louis down to Memphis or Memphis down to New Orleans. And, of course, if we do a senior cruise down to New Orleans, we've got to stay over a couple of nights and enjoy uh, New Orleans. Of course. Yes. yes. And the seniors, <laughs> seniors just love that. As a matter of fact, um, you know, there's some cruise lines that say, oh, we're for millenniums and, oh, we're for this and, oh, we're for that. And they try to lump everybody American Cruise Line say, no, 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 we're for seniors. This is a senior cruise. Seniors love this cruise, and they bring their grandkids, and they even bring their kids on board to see the history of what we grew up as. And, you know, when we grew up in school, we learned about the Mississippi and everything that happened along the way. And now you can see all the history all the way from St. Louis all the way down to New Orleans. So that's the second cruise that seniors want to take. And, and that one, even if you start in uh, Memphis, from what I understand, has a, a possibility to spend a day at Graceland. So you even, yes. get, you even get some Elvis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are tours into Graceland, absolutely. And that's one of the things that seniors would, would love to do also, absolutely. There are so many things. Uh, that's what's going to be fun as things kind of open up and we actually kind of get back to, <laughs> back to the, the life. that I think we're going to appreciate it more number one, but also the things that we all have had on our list, like we put this off for a year or two to do stuff. And that was actually a point, uh, dropping back to the October cruise that I wanted to bring up before we get down to our uh, mid-show break, just to kind of put a bow on all this stuff. You know, people may have let their passport expire because they said, well, you know, <laughs> I'm not traveling. What do I need to do this? And one of the things that you pointed out is if you have the, um, if you have your certified birth certificate and you have your uh, U.S. driver's license, am I saying that right? Yes. Then, because this is a circle journey, uh, you you don't have to renew your passport for this particular sailing. That is true. As long as you have a certified birth certificate with a blue stamp on it or it's an original birth certificate and your driver's license, you can get on the cruise. And currently, MSC is not requiring a vaccinations. To, to pro- uh, they, they, they'll want to see it, but the, you don't have to have it to get on. And there might be some testing. There's, it's going to be a little bit different than what we're used to. When we get to the port, there's going to be a, a, somebody there that's going to test our temperature. They're going to make sure that we go through the line safely. Uh, when we get up on board the ship, uh, everybody will, will try to stay at least three to four feet, unless you're with a family member. Cabins will be absolutely ultra clean. Instead of the buffets where you go up and grab your own food, they're going to have the buffets, but they're going to be having somebody serve you the food. So you're not touching the, 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 the spoons and the forks all the time, different people. They're going to be serving. And, of course, the restaurants will be open. The pool and everything will be, will be cleaned. I think, they're, I think they're bound to do it once, uh, once an hour to go through all the common areas and make sure they're clean. Wow. So it's, like I said, it's the, the ships and the hotels that are support will be cleaner than your own home. Chris, we're about to go into our mid-show break, but just real quick before we go, the phone number to get in touch with you. Please, if uh, you would call us at 321-978-5211. That's our phone number for the Helping Seniors Bavard Foundation Cruise. And I want to thank all of those seniors that have called all, uh, up already and have booked their cruise. We have about 15 to 16 cabins already sold or spoken for. So it's going to be a great cruise, and we'd love to see all the seniors that can come to share the Helping Seniors of Bavard Foundation cruise on October 17th. More Helping Seniors Radio next. Fam, you're listening to Helping Seniors of Brevard with Joe Steckler. Joe is off today. Sitting in for Joe is Carrie Fink. An interesting conversation, Carrie, about uh, the cruise industry and all the things that are going on. Yeah, we've been having a big time here today. We're just enjoying the spring weather. It's lovely. Everybody's getting vaccinated. We're getting on the other side of all this COVID stuff and starting to make plans for the future, which is uh, which is a fun thing to do. But I was thinking, you said we're sitting in for Joe. So if there's Six of us in the uh, in the broadcast. It takes six of us to cover for Joe is basically what it amounts to. And so, kind of going around the room, we I, I'm Carrie Fink, uh, and we have with us today Rick Broderick, who's our executive director. Hello, Rick. Hey, Carrie, how you doing? Good. It's really good to be here, and uh, we do miss Joe. So, wish him a real real quick, speedy recovery. Although 
we, as soon as we say that, we also know that he's about to get a second one done. Yeah, so. I think it's more like he wish, wish him a speedy training because now, he, now he's in training for the other knee. But yes. Rick likes being here in the front office, as they say in the airline industry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I feel important in here. This <laughs> well, is, is kind of nice. You're, you're, you're in the action part of the studios. It's good. And we have Jim Votro here and John Harper, who is uh, Talk to Me Radio. You've been uh, holding radio court for decades here on the, in, on the Space Coast. Or it has been. It has you've been you've covered all the space launches, everything that happens here. You, you're on top of all of it. It, uh, it's been a fun, uh, fun ride and uh, one that we want to uh, continue to uh, make happen. No, it's good. And also, folks, if you don't know, John uh, serves on the board of directors of Helping Seniors. He's uh, vice president. And you've been with Joe since the day he started the organization. Uh, since day one of Helping Seniors of Brevard. Uh, for some reason, I remember that very first <laughs> meeting very distinctly. <laughs> And uh, remember where it was and uh, remember all the uh, things that Joe had outlined for, uh, for the organization. And uh, here we are now uh, over a decade later and, uh, and still moving forward. That's good. It's good. And then we've, we're talking a lot with Chris Morse on the uh, first part of the show. Chris is, uh, has a company called Travel Center USA. It's a national travel agency that he and his partner Betty run. And uh, he also last year volunteered at a very unusual time just before COVID hit to say, hey, guys, I want to help, help you guys get this whole thing started, the Helping Seniors Travel Club, as a way to, to help seniors. Like we were talking about, I, we're going to spend a lot of time talking with our next guest, but just to, to kind of button this up, you know, we were talking about the fact that as people go back to sea and get back to a little bit of travel normally, one of the nice things about the cruise coming up on October uh, 17th, the Helping Seniors Foundation Cruise, is you guys are going to be on board with us. Yeah, we're going to be on board. We're going to be taking care of everybody. We're going to make sure that everything runs very smoothly. Being on 120 cruises, I know all of the cruise people and how to, how to react to them and how to treat them well so they treat us well. And just to button it up again, maybe you can share some information on our special entertainer that we're going to oh, have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, of course, the cruise ship already has world-class entertainment on board, but we are really fortunate that we're going to have a good friend of ours Join us on board. Her name is Lori Hafer. And you go, I don't necessarily know the name. We always call her Lori, I'd like to teach the world to sing Hafer because her and her mom were two of the members of the Hillside Singers. And so Lori Hafer sang lead on the song. Everybody calls it the Coca-Cola song now, but it's <laughs> I'd like to teach the world to sing. And not only that, Lori has toured the world with Glenn Miller Orchestra as, as the uh, featured uh, female vocalist and has also uh, uh, sung, she sang for years with the uh, Les Brown Band of Renown show out in Branson, Missouri, has traveled the world with them, also with the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra, so has a big background in jazz and uh, big band kind of uh, sound, just a wonderful singer. Uh, and on top of that, uh, she's been known to play quite frequently. Her and her husband, uh, Mike Hafer, will be over at Heidi's Jazz Club in Coco, and they're always a big draw there. So they are coming with us to provide a little private entertainment for our entire Helping Seniors group, which we hope is one of the advantage of this, of course, is the fact that if everybody's coming from Brevard County, you know, you meet great people on a cruise, and you say, oh, we'll, we'll exchange. Well, in the old days, it was postcards. Now it's emails. But here we say, well, let's have lunch next Tuesday because you live in Coco and I live in Melbourne. And it's just a great way for people to socialize. So before we move off on this, there is a limited time offer because this uh, deal that you've got worked out where you basically buy the least expensive cabin on the ship and they leapfrog you into a balcony cabin. What a great way to enjoy the sun for seven days. Uh, but how do people get in touch with you? And they need to do this, at least get the deposit in. It's perfectly safe, right? To but the deposit is perfectly safe until final payment, which is in the middle at the end of June. Uh -huh. So you can make a deposit, hold your cabin, and if something should go wrong or they decide to postpone again, which I hope they don't, then your deposit is 100% refundable, which is really good. So we not only do we work with seniors, we try to support our seniors and make sure that uh, nothing gets by us to hurt our seniors. And... Also, uh, we're reaching out to our corporate accounts uh, to actually come aboard and uh, share this, share all of the Helping Seniors Bavard Foundation crews with the seniors. We'll also have some days where they can set up a booth and share information with the seniors while they're yeah. on board the ship. That's good. We're going to have special entertainment. We have the $50 onboard credit. We have the free Wi-Fi. We have the 
upgrades from bal from um, inside to balcony. So it's just it's going to be a fabulous cruise. And in talking to the seniors that have booked, they say that they have waited almost two years, and they have the budget now. They have two years worth of travel budget. Don't forget those stimulus yes, checks, folks. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful cruise, and we'd love to have your support. So please call us at 321-978-5211. And thanks to all the seniors here in Bavard, we are the number one senior travel specialist in Bavard County and almost number one in Florida. So thank you for all the seniors to help us and helping seniors at Bavard Foundation. Carrie, before uh, you move on to our uh, guest, uh, Barbara, as well, uh, Chris, one more question for you. You've been talking about how the cruise industry is adhering very closely to the CDC guidelines on uh, cleanliness and uh, everything that they can do to ensure that the ships are as safe as they can possibly be. Uh, for the uh, cruise line industry and for the passengers. What about, uh, what about the crew itself? A lot of the crew are from other countries, and uh, some of those countries don't have the same uh, guidelines or even concerns about the pandemic as we do here in America. How's the cruise line industry handling that? I'm uh, so glad you asked that. The cruise lines now have, have installed a training system that are for current employees and, of course, all the new employees that come on from all, all the countries all over the world. And believe it or not, a cruise ship probably has workers and supporters from 65 countries on each cruise ship. So they're going to all train together. They're going to be all vaccinated, okay? And then they're all going to be on the ship and they'll be they'll be um, tested every other day. There's going to be cabins left over for both the passengers and the cruise uh, support team. That if anybody does get COVID or get sick, they will be placed in this particular area. Down on the uh, uh, I don't know where it's going to be on the ship, but it's going to be away from the regular passengers. And so they're going over and above. It's funny, the cruise lines are 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 doing 50 percent more than the CDC is requiring, which is really interesting because you, just think of it. If the first cruise line goes out and everybody gets COVID, that's the end of the cruise industry yeah. forever. Yeah. So they're going to make you sure think that it that could be that dire. Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, if the cruise industry gets ill again, that, that could be it? That could be it. Wow. Yeah. So unless something happens in 23 or 24, but the cruise lines can't hold on that long. They need passengers on board the ship paying money. So it's just a business, as you know. But they're going to they're gonna do a really good job to protect all of the seniors and, again, all the special support for the seniors, helping seniors of Bavard Foundation. Yeah, and, again, uh, the, the, if they're sailing starting in uh, July, uh, they will have had plenty of chance to get everything un under, under uh, full smooth sailing, I guess would be the way I would say it. So you want to give Chris and Betty a call. You can look at um, – you, you're, you're going to look at uh, uh, the helpingseniorstravelclub.com if you want to just have a quick look. So I want to shift gears because actually one of the ideas would – you know, if we're talking about um, – reverse mortgages and we have in-house with us longtime helping seniors friend uh barb mcintyre with Ver reverse mortgage funding and we were talking about this i said you know this is an incredibly hot housing market you know the the house values are like through the roof and i would think if you're considering a reverse mortgage maybe so that you could do some of the things that are on your bucket list like come sail with us on the uh helping seniors uh foundation cruise october 17th wouldn't this be an ideal time to take a look at that? Absolutely, it would. The reverse mortgage, all it does is let a homeowner access equity to their home, and that equity they access can be used for anything they want. So I talk to clients all the time who say, you know, we're making our bills. We're at the end of the month. We've paid everything, but we just don't have any extra money. We don't have any money. We haven't really gone anywhere. We just don't have any extra. And it could be, you know, extra to take advantage of this cruise and to meet some other seniors lo that are in the local area. <clears throat> it could be use the extra money to have some home health services come in and give you a hand. I see, uh, I actually, there's a lady in my neighborhood, she's 80 years old, and she's still mowing her grass. <laughs> 
Now, I have to say she she does it because that's how she right. sees keeping herself <laughs> healthy. But I often think, oh, my, <laughs> you know, I hope that's why she's doing it and not because she feels she can't afford to have someone help her with that. So right. reverse mortgages really are just a way to let seniors uh, tap into some home equity. And it's uh, it's just worth finding out what what the ins and outs are it's not a home ownership interest in your home you're not selling it you can only, you take just what you want from the mortgage so it's uh it's worth looking into that's what i think is one of the the common misperceptions and maybe how early on some of the things uh it maybe even got a, a little bit of a black eye is they say oh well you're coming to take my house but it's really not as as you've explained it it's really not different than like a home equity line of credit, except this is one that you choose to pay back or not pay back as as you feel fit. Absolutely. And when you actually make a payment back to the debt, when you choose, if you choose to, you can draw it back out again at a later date. So when people when people think of a reverse mortgage, they really should be thinking it's an optional payment mortgage. Mm -hmm. There is no requirement to pay it. So you're never at risk of getting in trouble with a lender because you just didn't have the funds to pay it back. It ex expects that if you don't want to pay it back, that's fine. It's paid back when the last borrower on title leaves the home. And it's, uh, but it just gives the, it gives seniors and boomers that are headed into retirement, it gives them just so many options about how they handle their finances. Barbara, is this one that um, you can take an amount each month, um, almost as if you know you're using it, as you you said, as a monthly payment, and there, therefore your mortgage increases if you take it. I'll keep it simple: a thousand dollars a month. Year six, you've got six thousand dollars of mortgage in there. Yes, you can with a reverse mortgage, you can draw the funds any way you want. And if you set it up, that particular payment of a monthly amount that comes every single month as long as you live in the home is called a tenure, not 10 year, but tenure like a tenured professor. That's a payment that comes to you every month like a social security deposit. Wow. And it just keeps coming into your bank account and yes it does grow the debt balance once again though you don't have to worry about the debt balance because the way the money is loaned life expectancy is kept in in mind and it's it's with intention to make sure there's going to be retained equity in the house so that someday in the future the house will be able to pay back the debt with that being said it also, this mortgage is a perfect way to give protection to homeowners against any potential devaluing of property. Mm -hmm. Because the fact that you do not have to make a payment and you never are going to be asked to leave your home as long as you pay your taxes, homeowners insurance, any homeowners association fees, live in the property as your primary residence, as long as you do that, then you can just continue to live there regardless of the loan balance. And actually, if I tell me if I have this right, Barb, because this actually kind of in a funny way protects your heirs, right? Because so so they say, well, gee, mom or dad, you're giving away our inheritance. Well, so the reverse could happen if they had to take out a loan on their house, right? And they were having to make payments, and then the house values just bottom out. You know, we've seen it in our lifetime, so right. you never say never. And then at the at when you're trying to settle the estate, well, that mortgage would have to be paid back, but not so with the reverse mortgage. That's exactly right, because the reverse mortgage details only the home, no other asset the borrower has is ever going to be used to satisfy the balance on the reverse mortgage. So the heirs never are hit with a loan deficiency that then they have to use another asset in the estate to pay back the, the mortgage, only the home. So again, it was 2008, Carrie, when the mm -hmm. bottom fell mm -hmm. out of home values. And right now, the, the property values are increasing leaps and bounds. A uh, little scary because you hate to see it go up too fast. Right. Be, regardless, 
once you do a reverse mortgage, you take advantage of the higher values and you're insulated against any depreciation uh, in value. We don't ever recalculate your benefit and say, we, we know your value has dropped on your house. So remember the line of credit, you can't use it anymore. That's what happens when a HELOC, a home equity line of credit is taken from a bank and property values drop. That cannot happen with a reverse mortgage. So Carrie, you're right. There, this is a perfect time for boomers and seniors, anyone over 62 years old, to actually look at what what's going on with my house. What is it worth? What could I establish this line of credit, which will be increasing over time, giving me access to more equity? Or should I pay off an existing mortgage so that I'm not giving my money and interest every month to the bank, benefiting the bank, but not really benefiting me mm -hmm. and, and be able to save my money. And so there's just a lot of reasons that the reverse mortgage for people that are, and we talk about this a lot, looking forward, planning what their future years are going to look like. They need to take a look at it. It's, it's smart to know options, to know your options. And let's talk about the flip side of this. Suppose the economy does go great guns and house prices keep going up. I know one of the things we were talking about during the break is that oftentimes you've seen people take reverse mortgage funds to buy another house. Yes, because like I said, you can use the funds any way you want. So as long as the house you are, are using, the house that your reverse mortgage is attached to remains to be your primary residence, you absolutely can buy a second home, a vacation home, or a rental home, a, or even an investment property. You can do anything you want with those funds. And uh, yeah, it's just another another source resource of funds on a on a asset that you cannot that's not liquid unless you do something like take that mortgage. Barbara, let me ask a question on that because it sounds like there's even a, a, a third benefit to that. Now, well, I guess I'm asking it as a question, so I won't say it as a statement. But if the market, as Kerry indicated, continued to go up. Um, and I'd like to use numbers that at least I can identify with. And you're, you have a house today worth you know $200,000. The, the reverse mortgage is based on that, but the house goes up to be 300000 Can they increase? Uh, you, you mentioned before with the market that you know, went down, they don't decrease. Uh, they keep right at that two hundred dollars or whatever the, the amount was. Um, but what if it goes up? Can they increase their reverse mortgage? You can't take the same exact mortgage and just increase it. But what you can do, given the right set of circumstances, is you can actually refinance a reverse mortgage. So you would want to see a large amount of appreciation. And we do have some rules around when someone can refinance in order to protect the consumer against what in the lending world we call churning, mm -hmm. where lenders keep going back and saying refinance again refinance again and really the only buddy the only person benefiting is the lender we have strong rules to protect the consumer but you can and we have seen in the last year because of the increase in values we have definitely been seeing refinancing of reverse mortgages it also has to do with interest rates. We've had a, a, the interest rates came down very low over the last year, and that was another reason why people were interested in looking at refinancing. Thank you. That, You're welcome. That's, that's big, big help. You know, and I guess the thing that I keep learning every time we sit down with Barb McIntyre and kind of get like this whole <laughs> peek behind all the things about reverse mortgages is that everybody's situation is going to be different. I know we've even had the conversation that some people want to lock in early, like if they're 62, 63, they want to even use it as a means because, the, as you've explained before, that uh, over time your borrowing capacity in the home will actually increase just because of the actuarial results of how all that's put together. But I guess the key point is you're quite generous with your time. You're willing to sit down with somebody and take a look at this, and even if it's not right for them, you'll be very upfront and say this is not the best move for you. But more often than not, people call you up. Even people who've got a reverse mortgage will call you up and say, is this the right thing for me? It, it's so interesting. 16 years ago, when I first, I just felt like I needed to change my life and just move into a new 
arena. I wasn't sure what I needed to do. And I first got a real estate license and then I got my mortgage license and I was still scratching my head. I went to work for a, a mortgage broker and about two weeks later, someone came in the door from a wholesale, it was from a large lender and introduced reverse mortgages. And that's when I knew that it was almost a calling for me. And so Carrie, you're right. I will... I don't care what else I do. I'm always going to be answering questions, staying on top of the mortgagee letters that come from the FHA, which guide the program. I'm always going to be a resource because that's that's exactly how I feel about the program. Hey, so, Barb, how about, um, because I know uh, we're getting close toward the end, throw out that number because I want to be able to get in touch with you. How do I get in touch with yes. you? Absolutely. Very easily. You can call 321 321- Two five nine seven eight eight zero. That's three two one two five nine seven eight eight zero. And uh, I, myself, and my an associate, Rich Frank, we are always on the ready to answer questions and and meet with advisors, uh, the borrower, their children, anyone who has questions and wants to better understand this product. My final question. I know we're really just about out, but my final question is. I'm about to buy a house and I'm going to pay cash for it. Is it worth it to instead, you know, obviously, instead of taking a mortgage, is it is that the time to look for a reverse mortgage? It absolutely is a time to look and see how the mortgage would look for what you're buying. Because what it will allow you to do, if you use the Heckam Purchase Mortgage, you will be able to purchase that mortgage for about 50% of the cash that you intended to use to buy the whole house. So you're at whatever your investment was going to be, if, if you were purchasing it all cash, you would be able to keep 50% of that still in your investments. And the HECM or the, re, the reverse mortgage would give you that mortgage for the other 50%. It's definitely worth looking at whether you were going to be a cash buyer or a conventional mortgage obtain a conventional mortgage like i said i need you yeah need your help <laughs> great, great resources in the helping seniors family and i want to we really are about out of time but i want to remind you to take a look at helping seniors of org, or if you like youtube find our uh, channel there or even on facebook you'll find all of these great uh tv programs that we've done along the way uh barb has done a number of these with joe all about uh background on reverse mortgages chris has we've done a couple on the uh, travel industry how to cruise successfully in your golden years and all those things so you have to uh you have to stay in contact with helping seniors helping seniors of brevard.org our phone number is 321-473-7770 so if there's anything we've talked about today you want more information about including our car raffle october 9th helping seniors car raffle.com you can get tickets kim will get you squared around tickets if you didn't get chris's number down she'll get you in contact with chris if you didn't get barb's number down she'll get you in contact with barb because that's what we're all about is connecting you to the resources that will help you on your aging plan so with that john harper uh, thank you for joining us on today and we will see you next wednesday on helping seniors radio